You may wonder why we should care about meteorites and asteroids. And I really hope that by the end of my talk, you will, convince, you will be convinced that we should care about these grayish, blackish stones that are only, not only nice in their insides, but really deserve more attention. By the way, personally, I found them very nicely looking outside as well. I assume it's a question of taste. Since the birth of Earth 4.56 billion years ago, we have been bombarded by asteroids. They have been one of the major shaping process on Earth, our neighbor worlds, but also influence our lives. Today, I would like to tell you the story of meteorites, asteroids, and their impact. Our travel will start here in Vienna, because in Vienna, you cannot ignore that we have the largest display of meteorites in the world and the oldest meteorite collection. As the emperor started, to collect them in 1778, and decades before they were recognized to be meteorites. It is where I am located as a curator of collection. But before to uh, go into details, I would like to define what are asteroids. Asteroids are rocky objects ranging in size from boulder to tiny planets, tiny moons, and orbiting or sun. They look like potatoes. Millions of them orbit in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Here is an example of a kilometers in size asteroid, a small guy, because the largest one that we know so far is called Ceres and is about 950 kilometers in diameter, and it was discovered in 1801, 200 years ago. Here is an image showing you in which the talk will be evolving. It's the sun in the middle, and you see different planets from our solar systems. You see the asteroids in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, and you even can see a comet in the backside, and I will come back to comet by the end of my talk. Before to go into uh, much details, I would like now to define what are meteorites, because it's probably not so clear for everybody. Meteorites are rocks or iron fragments of extraterrestrial origin that have survived to their entry in the atmosphere and that have safely landed on Earth. They can be from a few grams up to several tons. And what do you think? Are they hot or are they cold when they arrive on the surface? They are cold because they have been cold forever, for ages, and they have just uh, um, been hot at the surface during their entry in the atmosphere, but their inside is still cold, and when they land on Earth, they are still pretty cold. They are very interesting because they are very old. They are the oldest rocks that you can find on Earth, up to 4.56 billion years old, and they are witnesses of the past times. They tell us a lot about of the original uh, formation of the solar systems. If we look closer at them, I will invite you to look at their insides and try to convince you that the inside is a, like humans is very interesting and you should look at it, it deserves exploration. We can easily distinguish four big groups as illustrated here, and the idea is to show you um, the different story that this type of meteorites can tell us if you look into details. The first ones are the very primitive ones, they are called chondrites, and they record information from the very early day in the solar systems. They have been barely not or very slightly changed since their formation 4.56 billion years ago. Then you have other meteorites, the iron meteorites like this one, they are differentiated meteorites, it means that they have recorded all the processes of the planetary differentiation. They are made of iron and nickel, and they originate from the core of this asteroids, and they tell us by analogy about how the core of our own Earth is made and how it was formed. In the other picture, you can see the so-called palazites. They are quite pretty. It's a mixture of olivines that are silicates with a matrix of iron and nickel, and these meteorites tell you another story about how this body has been evolving in the early time. Then we come to another type of meteorites that come from Mars. They have been ejected by the impact of an asteroid or comet before to land safely on Earth. In the same way, we have meteorites from the Moon. And these are really unique samples, especially from Mars, because they are the only sample we have in our laboratory to study Mars. Then, I think you are convinced now that these different types of meteorites can tell us a lot of story. And 
the idea is to look at their inside, and you can learn a lot on the stellar evolution even, because in some of them, you find tiny stardust grains that have been formed in stars before the formation of our solar system and now incorporated in these meteorites. They tell us about the age and the composition of the solar systems, and as well, the formation of the solar system, the condition in the very early time. Other ones, the one from Mars or from the Moon, they tell us about the differentiation processes of the planets, and some of them even uh, have brought to Earth the chemicals necessary for origin of life. In the other way around, large meteorites' impact may have led to major extinction that influence the course of life on Earth. This is was a pretty image, sorry. This is in a, st uh, in a very primitive meteorite. It's why they can look very, very pretty if you look at them under the microscope. And, okay, you will say, okay, very interesting, but, uh, or not interesting, but why should I care? My answer is the Chelyabinsk meteorite. I assume everybody in this room have heard about it or see at least the event, this fireball. It's, it was very recent. It was in February 2013. It was a very spectacular, the most spectacular cosmic event of the last decades. What happened, it was an asteroid that entered the atmosphere, a big guy, big. This is relative because it was only 12,000 tons, about 19 meters in diameter, and the result was that over 1,500 people were injured. This event showed us that we are better to care about them. In the case of the collision of larger asteroids or comets with the surface of a large body, such as the Moon or Earth, an impact crater will be formed. Due to the high velocity of the projectile, you have to imagine that these guys travel at cosmic speed, tens of kilometers per second, and the energy that is released will excavate these impact craters. If you look at this Moon, you can see it as well in the evening by yourself, you will see a lot of circular depression on it. They are impact craters. There are many, many of them, and they are kind of a window to see inside the planet. If you look at Earth, Hmm. You can hardly see anything, right? If you look at this map, uh, you will see a lot of red dots. This is Earth. And uh, I have put on this map all the impact structures that we know so far. There is 186. They are widely distributed all around. And I will uh, not go into details about uh, these guys, but I will uh, tell you a little bit more how they formed. And I will take you with me in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where I discovered one very recently. This is how it, it formed. You see it's in real time. It's very quick. You have now uh, looking at the formation in real time of the formation of an impact that is 10 kilometers in diameter. After 20 seconds, you have a hole that is 10 kilometers in diameter to show you that geology is something very, very active in some cases. You would not be happy or you should not be living in Vienna if this happens in Vienna and even not in Austria because it's very huge in uh, energy and intensity. This is an example of a small one, very famous one. Meteor crater is in Arizona. It's a little bit over one kilometer in diameter. Very pretty because it's very young, 50,000 years old. And because of that, it's very well preserved. In this case, because it is small, you can even find some part of these meteorites if you uh, look around, because not all the meteorites, all the asteroids, sorry, have been vaporized. In the case of bigger ones, like these guys, in Manicouagan, 100 kilometers in diameter, it's in Canada, it's much older, more than 200 million years old, you will not find meteorites because everything has been vaporized. This is a big one, sure, but we have even bigger one on Earth in the order of more than 300 kilometers in diameter. I will now take you with me in the Congo, that, because you are now familiar with what are meteorites, asteroids, impact craters, and this is because in the last century we have explored Earth, navigating vast oceans. In the last decades, we started to explore space, in particular our solar system, and today I really think that we should continue this exploration, even in some part of Earth that are very hard to access. Basically, what I have done, I was looking at satellite images, like the one you can see on the screen, looking on Google Earth, for example, and you see something, but you are not the first to see it, of course, but the way to prove that it was uh, something happening there is to go there and to check what I did. This was not an easy task, as it is fairly remote and not that safe, the reason to be escorted by a military soldier. I will not tell you much about all the snakes, spiders, and all their local friends, but I think it's definitely a charming place to visit. I have been three times so far. Here we are just in the central part of the 17 kilometer uh, diameter impact structure, and what we can see is a very vegetated and geologically disturbed area. And then what? What then? You find these rocks, so-called shatter cones, and then you are happy. As these rocks... 
this These rocks are unique to meteorite impact crater. Their discovery allowed me to confirm the meteorite impact origin of these structures. Then they look like that. Then you go back to your lab, you look closer at these rocks under a microscope, and you see other evidences that these rocks suffered extremely high pressure, such as these quartz grains that you can see over there with deformations that are unique to impact. I have just demonstrated in front of you how we can definitively prove a meteorite impact crater. Then you can add it to the map, but what then? Why should we care? This, is, this discovery it was the first one found in Central Africa. Then why we should care about it? I definitely think that we should care, and if, it's, if you are not still convinced about it, are you? We can ask the dinosaur. Why is that? If we look in the geological archives at rocks dating back from 65 million years ago, we will find a very specific layer. And this layer corresponds to the extinction of the dinosaur. And in this layer, we found traces of a large meteorite impact. The impact crater itself, almost 200 kilometers in diameter, is located in the Yucatan in Mexico. And it was so huge that the consequences for life on Earth were catastrophic. This is a fact and the reason why we should care. But taking into account all what I have just told you guys, and especially the relatively small event of Chelyabins that everybody in this room have been witnessed, the risk of asteroid strike is underestimated. Do not worry. <laughs> I am convinced <laughs> that I'm convinced that we can and we should try to avoid asteroid impact and especially to be prepared. In theory, it is very easy. We should detect them early enough we should have plans, and we should act. This is very basic, but uh, today, myself, I am not involved in that, but uh, there is some other colleagues uh, in NASA and at the European Space Agency that are working on this issue, trying to detect this asteroid. There is some power in, but there should be a lot more because we will never discover all these dangerous asteroids before the impact Earth. And there is other guys that try to prepare some realistic plans, knowing that in this scenario, even some of them are really science fiction looking like, we will not request the help of Bruce Willis. I have just <laughs> listed here the more realistic developed strategies. There is many of those, I just want to tell you about a few of those, especially the nuclear weapons, for example. The idea is to, uh, to uh, have a nuclear bomb exploding close to the surface of one of these dangerous asteroids early enough, but this is quite risky in case it explodes before to safely depart Earth. There is another uh, scenario that is to smash a spacecraft into an asteroid. This is a little bit more realistic, but this you should detect this asteroid quite early enough. You can also uh, have a, a flying spacecraft near, near the asteroid for a long time to act as a gravity tractor. This you need to have planned early on. There is also uh, some people that would like to paint them because the color change uh, could influence the orbit. You can deploy uh, uh, mirror, space mirror, etc., etc. It's an open list. If you want to suggest anything, you are welcome. <laughs> then, then I would like now to, uh, to tell you why, why we are so excited, so motivated about them. Uh, some of us probably are crazy, but some others uh, would would like to discuss with you um, why we, we should continue in this field of research. And uh, is it really the need for knowledge or there is obvious economical aspect to consider? For the meteorites, not really. You can, of course, collect meteorites as you would collect paints or anything else, but I will not discuss this issue with you today. I would prefer to discuss impact and asteroid. For the case of the impact craters, there is plenty of deposit of economic interest on Earth that are located within impact craters. For asteroids, due to their composition, they can be seen as a future resource. Each asteroid contains a lot of water, more or less, in fact, metals, minerals, rare, rare on Earth, and carbonaceous material in various amounts. They can be mined for their raw material, even this is quite difficult, or be used as resource resources to explore and colonize our solar system. You know, like not to go directly somewhere, but to stop on an, on an asteroid and use the resources available over there to not carry everything with you, what is very expensive and very difficult. And 
there is some company right now that have injected quite a lot of money to mine asteroids. I just told you that we would be happy if these guys can not come too close from Earth, but there is other guys that want to carry them close to Earth to be able to extract their resources. That's why it's quite ambivalent in this case. Anyway, I think the more important for all of us is all the technology that is developed for such studies, projects that will benefit to everybody in one way or in another. And to finish, before they kick, out, uh, kick me out of the stage, sorry, I just <laughs> would like to attract your attention, if you are not already aware, because we are really leaving something right now, on the Rosetta mission. I don't know if you are aware about this mission, but this is the first mission that will rendezvous with a comet, with a comet and this is in less than two weeks from now. It will land on this comet, which, you know, they are icy, rocky objects, still very mysterious, and is why the exploration continues. I will finish with this slide. Back in Vienna, hoping that you have appreciated this short travel with me and welcoming you to the Natural History Museum. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>